Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a video response to a YouTube video I saw and the video is by her YouTube name is Josie. It's J-O-U-E-L-Z-Y. I'll leave a link to the video that I saw in the description box and it's basically the video was about you know having realistic expectations for the type of hair that you have so I'm just gonna share when I was watching the video it's just like I just kept thinking oh my god yes like she is speaking the truth so I was like I'm gonna do a video response and also share my views on what I think I should like the things I've had to come to terms with in regards to my hair and also what you know if you have similar hair texture to mine you might want to consider and not you know expect your hair to do things that it probably can't do so first of all wash and goes so first of all okay before I go into the expect what what you know what you should expect from your hair I have 4C. I'm just gonna say I have 4C hair. You know, even though they say, um, even you know the texture of your hair, even with the texture of your hair, there are other things to consider, like the density of your hair and the porosity and all that. You know, good stuff. But basically, my hair is 4C. It's very. It's not. It doesn't have any curls that can be defined, or it's just 4C. So anyway, so first of all. <sighs> wash and goes yes my hair cannot do wash and goes you know i can't say i'm gonna look at you know like uh mahogany curls she has gorgeous hair but her hair texture is completely different from mine so how she could do a wash and go and it looks you know just beautiful if i do the same thing my hair does not look anything like that first of all it takes it'll take forever and when i say forever i mean forever to dry you know even if i was using just a hair gel or you know a hair butter or curl defining cream first of all it's going to take forever to dry and then even when i use these products my hair doesn't really have a hair doesn't really have a pattern to define you know in the back it's the texture's a little looser so there might be something to define but otherwise, there really isn't a curl pattern that I want to wash, you know, and go. You know, if I smooth, I might smooth, smooth <clears throat> the hair product through my hair, but it just, there's nothing to be defined. So, wash and goes do not work. And even if I did a wash and go, it'll just like shrink up, like shrink up. I mean, it would go from once it's wet my hair basically just absorbs all the moisture and coils up and coils up so wash and goes for me are a no-no i've tried them a couple of times you know thinking oh maybe it'll be different this time or you know maybe if i use a diffuser it'll be different but it's pretty much the same so i gave up on doing wash the only time i did wash and goes was when i just uh cut my hair so it was really really short so drying was happened in like no time and it you know my hair pattern was still short enough that it looked like it had a curl in it but it's just no curl so yeah wash and goes are a no-no second of all like doing the pineapple method to maintain like a twist out or a braid out and basically a pineapple method is where you take all your hair and you push it to the front of your head and you hold it with um, either a headband or a scarf or like put it in a loose ponytail at the top of your head and what it's supposed to do is stretch the curls in the back of your head so that when you take it down it just falls and the curls are elongated in the back and the rest of it just falls but with my hair when I put it in a ponytail when I take the ponytail down, my hair does not just lay down. My hair lays up. So if I put it in a ponytail, it's going to stay like that even when I take the hair down. So for me, it doesn't really help to maintain any curl pattern that I might have had from like a twist out or a braid out. And it doesn't help elongate anything. It just pushes it up and stays there. 
and you know people some people say you know whenever I do the pineapple method when I take down my ponytail I just spritz it with a little bit of water and you know fluff it out when I do that my hair just absorbs all the moisture and shrinks up so it stays up and then it shrinks up so wash and goes I mean I'm sorry so the pineapple method does not work for me at all I, I tried it a couple of times thinking you know oh if I if I you know Maybe this time would be different if I use a satin uh, headband instead of a silk, you know, whatever. If I use something different, it will work, but it really doesn't work. So I find the only way I can maintain twist outs and braid outs, braid outs is if I retwist my hair in sections or put it in braids. Yeah, so basically um, that's that. And also with pineapple method, what I find happens is even... If I do get it, even if it stays up and it's like stretched out and I can wear it in like a puff instead, the problem is the middle part of my hair isn't getting any stretch, right? So even when I pull it up, the back might be stretched out, even the front might be stretched out a little bit, but the middle part doesn't stretch out because it's not going in any direction. It just kind of stays there. So for me, putting in a pineapple usually just defeats the purpose of any twist out or braid out I'm trying to maintain. Next is finger detangling. Yes, a lot of people who are who use the curly girl method, um, they don't use combs on their hair. They just finger detangle their curls. And I, I tried doing that, and it, I felt horribly. So the thing is, my hair is very, very. It's tight and it's curly coily zigzag I don't know what it is but I can't easily just go through my hair and finger detangle to get the curls and the to get the knots out it doesn't work that way I might be able to whenever if I take down like a braid out or if I have my hair in twist I might be able to use my fingers to pull out like some of the shed hair but my fingers on their own cannot detangle my hair my hair so I use a comb I do not try to finger detangle at all because what happens is my fingers just get snagged in the knots and it just breaks my hair. So I do not finger detangle and I use a white tooth comb and when I'm twisting my hair I use a small tooth comb. I go, I first go over with a white tooth comb to get like most of the tangles out and then I go over with a smaller tooth comb, you know, working my way from the, from the tip ends of my hair and combing through all the way to the roots of my hair so yes finger detangling doesn't work either another thing with uh, my hair is single strand knots now I have come to accept that no matter what I do with my hair no matter how much I take care of it no matter how much moisture how gentle I am my hair is always gonna have single strand knots now why do I say this I say this because my hair on its own it's it curls on itself so even if I wore my hair in stretched out styles or if I had my hair in braids the moment water touches my hair or any form of moisture it curls together and it basically starts to curl around itself so the knots are always going to be there most of the knots I have are on the ends of my hair as opposed to along the shaft of my hair which is why I don't really worry about them so I've come to accept that single strand knots will always be a part of my hair I don't necessarily go through and try to cut them out all the time because I just know no matter what I do it's always going to curl on itself and it's going to form a knot so whatever i do when i have a big knot is i take this section of hair and i pull it apart from like try to pull it apart from the bottom and that way it usually separates out as opposed to just running the comb through it or just cutting it off like for like if you look at my i have my hair in twist because i'm trying to do a braid out so i'm going to zoom in a little closer if you look at the strands of my hair, hopefully this shows. Uh -huh. Let me see if I can find a strand to show you. I hope I hope you guys can see this, but 
if I find one. <laughs> um, all right. So these strands here, if you notice, there are some single knots along my strand. And that's how most of my single strand knots are. They're on the strand itself and I'm not going to go through my whole entire head and try to take out the knots because I know they're always going to be there regardless of what I do. You know, I'm more careful with my ends and I might take care of them a little bit more and, you know, be gentle with my comb, but I do not stress out about single strand knots at all. And finally, one of the major things I had to accept about my hair is shrinkage. Um, and for those of you who don't know, basically curly hair, it's like, think of it like a, what are those things? You know those springy little things you used to play with as a kid that are like curly and when you pull them out they expand and like slinkies, I think that's what they're called. So the, the way a slinky is, is basically the way your hair is. So once you pull it out, it expands and shows you the true length, but then if it's not pulled out, it shrinks up and becomes, you know, that tiny little, you know, small like this. And then when you expand it, it goes, it becomes a lot. So that's the same way my hair works. But the thing that um, my hair, it, it shrinks up whenever there's moisture in the air or in my hair. So where someone would um, spray their hair with water because they want, it, want to make it more manageable. In my case, once I spray my hair down with water, you know, my hair becomes moisturized, but at the same time, my hair starts to shrink up. So, even when I'm like, whenever I, when I step out of the shower, my hair is basically this much. That's how much it shrinks. If I don't have it in braids or um, in knots on my hair, it basically shrinks up and it's just small like that. Because it has all this moisture, it swells up and absorbs all the moisture. And basically looks like I just got a haircut. Now, even when I do like a braid out or a twist out, the moment I go outside, if it's humid outside and it's, you know, usually humid in Houston, my hair just starts to take up all the moisture from the hip, from the air and it basically swells up. So I don't really worry about getting hang time from a braid out, a twist out, unless my hair gets like, you know, really, really long, you know, to the point where I can notice where I feel like the length will be noticeable you know I don't really worry about you know hang time I know the shrinkage is always going to be there so where someone might tell you oh you know to to maintain your hair at night just spritz it with some water or no just twist it up and in the morning before you go just spritz it with some water shake your hair and take once I do that it means that my twist out is going to be you know shrunken if I don't do that if I just twist it at night and take it down in the morning then I know I'll still have a little bit of length compared to if I sprayed it out in the morning with water so anyway these are a few of the things that I've had to accept with my natural hair texture and I don't expect it to do things that someone else's hair texture would, would do I know for some people you know I'm not saying that you I'm not saying that you can't learn from other people who have different hair textures. I definitely do. But I also know that when they do their hair, I might like I might follow the technique. I might see what they do. But I know most likely my hair is not going to turn out the way theirs turns out. Unless it's like some form of updo or, you know, a protective style. And even like whenever people do like updos, and they're like, oh, you know, before I before I go ahead and start doing my updo, I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture, switch my hair with a little bit of water. Once I do that, I lose the length that I would have used to do my updo. If I was going to do a pompadour and I spray it down with some water, my hair automatically shrinks up. And so I don't get the volume or the length that I would usually get, you know, if I hadn't put any water. So those were just a few things I love that video that I saw and I was like I have to do mine <laughs> and just let people know that you know all hair our hair is all different you know what might work for one person won't work for another person and just knowing what your hair can take and what it can take knowing what your hair can do and what it can't do 
sometimes makes a whole lot of different difference anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video like if you want to see more videos and don't forget to leave any comments or questions in the description box thanks for watching bye